It's very nice to meet you too. Laura has said so much about you. I'm so excited about this. So. Yeah. <laughs> I got the feeling all of it's true. All of it's true. So how are you doing today? Well, come on this way. Hello, welcome to Donnie Jones Live. I'm your host, Donnie Jones, and welcome to another great episode of our show. You know, you, we're always trying to find people in the community that are doing great things, that are making a difference. In our show today, we've got a gentleman that is doing exactly that. And not only is he doing that, he's doing it all over the world. This man is at a dare, he's a daredevil, an adventurer, he's a climber, and he's also a wonderful man of God. And I just wanted to give you guys the chance to get to know this wonderful gentleman. And I'm talking about Mr. Jermaine Middleton. How you doing? I'm doing good. Thanks thank you. Me. Oh, Excited thank you here. for coming to our show. We appreciate it. Jermaine, I got to tell you, when I got, when Laura, my, our friend, a friend of mine was telling me about you, I just said, I've got to meet this man. He's all over the world. He's making a difference. He's climbing mountains. He's raising money for charity. What doesn't he do? But I want you to tell, tell people basically your story and how you got started. Yeah, so that's, a, I guess, a tough question. Uh, I mean, it would start when I was a kid. Uh, I've been fortunate to be in a situation where, you know, my parents have come from a very loving household, grew yeah. up in the church. And so from a very diverse church as well, as you know. Yeah. And so exposed to a lot of different things. And I've always been a daredevil since yeah. I was a kid. And so Absolutely. it's kind of just, I'm going to say I haven't grown up that much. <laughs> so, you know, when you're a kid and you're like, man, right. I want to do this. I want to climb this mountain. I want to yeah. go do this adventure or whatever. I'm still that person. Yeah. But as an adult, you can actually do those things. And Absolutely. You, know, you can actually bring them to manifest. And so that's one of the exciting things about it. Well, that's one of the reasons why we're here is because we are here because you do climb mountains. And you've climbed mountains all over the world. And you climb them for a good cause. But at the same token, you know, we're also here because we want to raise awareness about what you're doing, mm -hmm. which also means raise funds for what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And um, can you tell us why it's so important, the work that you do? Yeah. So, you know, people have asked me, like, Jermaine, what's the connection between you climbing a mountain and these charities? Yeah. And honestly, there is no direct connection aside from the fact that this is how I'm using the platform to leverage for the people that can't leverage it for themselves. Yeah. And so yeah. there's a lot of different things, uh, especially in Atlanta. So the different ministries that I picked or the different charities that I picked, rather, I'm very passionate about their cause. Yeah. And I went into it, you know, very prayerfully for a long time. Probably spent yeah. too much time trying yeah. to decide who I want to partner with. But yeah. to me, that was very important. Mm -hmm. And so, again, using the unique thing about me climbing Mount Everest, being the first American-born black man to do so, yes. I'm like, yeah, it's cool if I climb a mountain, but it'd be even cooler if I could use that to benefit others mm -hmm. outside of myself. And so that's you know the main thing behind it. And again, finding charities that I thought would uh, advance certain people within the city. So Children's yeah. Healthcare of Atlanta, I mean, they do amazing things. It's one yeah. of the, you know, the largest healthcare, ch child healthcare provider in Atlanta. Yeah. And they do a lot of the great things. So, I mean, children's cancer, uh, whether it's sickle cell treatments, all those different things, like they're having a big impact, right? They're so making a difference. you think about the future and, and the opportunities that kids have, it's right. like, you need to be healthy in order to learn. You need to be healthy in order to go to school and all yes. those other different things. But you know, you mentioned something, the fact that you're gonna be the first American born, African American to climb Mount Everest. But I would assume that in a lot of the different mountains that you've climbed, because you did, um, in Africa, you did, what was it? Kilimanjaro. Kilimanjaro. Mm -hmm. And then in India, you did, I, I don't know how to pronounce it. it starts with an a a oh, that's actually in argentina that's argentina Akinkagua. so yeah, yeah i don't yeah. know what my, <laughs> i don't know i just know you climbed a bunch of mountains yeah. but i guess for me i'm looking at that going you know this is your ministry mm -hmm. you know I, I i know you're dealing with charities but i think your life in and of itself is a ministry mm -hmm. and i think that's very fascinating with you especially being such a young man there had to be somewhere along your when you were uh before you came up with doing this that you kind of thought what am I going to do with the rest of my life? How did you come mm -hmm. up with this idea? Yeah. So to that point, you know, I've been, again, adventurous for a very long time. Yeah. And so, you know, fortunately, God was able to show me that it's not just a selfish thing that I can use those different things when I share them right. with people to help them benefit, you know, to benefit them and motivate them, whatever that case may be. Yeah. So uh, doing short term mission trips and traveling to India and being able to have pictures that show people of adventures right. and show them that, you know, your relationship with Christ doesn't have to be some very, you know, simple thing that right. you're in a painting. It can be right. this amazing adventure, right. you know, and so that's part of it. So if you um, have fun, 
while doing your ministry, then maybe people will think it's fun to follow Christ. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> okay. But uh, the, the you don't have side. to be a little old lady <laughs> in a little hat, you know, yeah. at church all the time. Yeah, exactly. You can live your life to the mm -hmm. fullest. And it sounds like you're living your life to the fullest. Does that have something to do with the name of your organization, Summit 413? Yeah, so or Summit 413, that came from just my favorite Bible verse. Okay. Um, I incorporate uh, Philippians 413 in pretty much a lot of different things. Obviously, okay. I incorporate God in everything that I do. Yeah. And so I wanted to have that connection piece in there. And I want mm -hmm. people to, to know. And it's really great when people ask you know because you come across people from all walks of life so i'm at yeah. the airport somebody asks, like what's that shirt about tell me about it yeah and i can you know share it's like hey i'm climbing Everest, but you know what's the 413 part I'm like that's my favorite bible verse so i'm like oh gotcha. well, what is it so then i get to speak that into their lives and to me that's really exciting to be able to do that so i could have you know obviously just put something else and not yeah. have the 413 in there but it's kind of yeah. like you could have put black lives matter 413. Yeah, I'm no i'm just kidding <laughs> But, uh, but yeah, and so I guess with this particular journey and how I got to where I am as far as wanting to climb Mount Everest and part of those charities, honestly, just praying about the different areas of my life that I've been passionate about for years. Right. Um, like I said, I've been involved with short-term missions for a very long time. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's a relative term, but I mean. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, you're yeah. young. Tell so people I'm, how old you are. I'm I'm, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, 30. you're a 30-year-old man. <laughs> You've been around the world doing mm -hmm. this. I mean, usually you would think that that's like a 50-year-old white guy, but no, <laughs> it's you. Yeah, and I love that. I've been that. saying that for a while. So I have the hobbies of like a 45-year-old white guy, which some of them are true. But that's honestly, that's the good thing about what you're doing. You're opening up the um, the idea of what we can do mm -hmm. um, in your bio. I also saw that you did some scuba diving. Yeah, I love scuba. Diving. And I just I actually just went on my first scuba Congrats. diving trip in Bonaire uh, back in November. Mm -hmm. And that was let's just was say amazing. that was it was amazing. <laughs> it was absolutely amazing. But what's funny is when I first started taking scuba lessons, mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I can do this, you know. It's a whole lot different when you get into the ocean, you know. Mm -hmm. How did you get into scuba? Uh, similar uh, thing is just something I want to do. And again, okay. becoming an adult, you're like, okay, what steps do I need to take to actually make this thing happen? Yeah. And so just going through and saying, this is where I'm going to get certified. These are some of the dives that I want to do. And just where are some of the places that you've dove? Uh, so I've been, I dove in India. That was one of my first ones off the Andaman Islands, um, which you would probably be familiar with those islands only because recently there was a missionary that was killed there. Yeah. Um, aside from that, it's pretty. It's a really remote place, but that was some amazing diving there. Um, I've been obviously a few places in Florida, which done some amazing sharp dives down there, right. which is a lot of fun. And uh, this past year, my most recent dive was in Hawaii. Oh my and god, that was, I love Hawaii. That was amazing. Yeah. Well, you know, I want to talk and more about Mexico. what you're doing. But how can people get in contact with you? You can actually just look right in camera and tell people how mm -hmm. they can get in contact with yeah, you. Yeah. So the best way to get in contact with me would just be through my email or through my social media accounts. Uh, my email is info at summit413.com and you can follow me on social media at summit413.com. That's on Instagram and also Facebook. Wonderful, wonderful. And which one of those platforms do you prefer them to reach out to you? Or does it doesn't matter. It, it doesn't matter. It kind of no. all in the same place. Just get in contact. That's, just that's, get that's in contact the with the man. If you want to do all three, that works as well. But that's yeah. awesome. <laughs> well, we're going to take a quick break, and okay. we'll be right back to talk a little bit more about Summit 413. Once again, I'm Donnie Jones, and we're here with Jermaine Middleton, out out to make a difference. Spreading the seeds of life right here on the Donnie Jones Live Show. Sponsored by Don's Tree Service. If you got a comment about the show or want to be a guest on the show, just send us an email at DonnieJonesLive at gmail.com. Welcome back to Donnie Jones Live. I'm Donnie Jones here with Jermaine Middleton of Summit 413. We're, right before we went to break, we were talking about some of the things that he's done as far as scuba and mountain climbing and, and once again making a difference in the world. But I kind of wanted to go back to the mountain climbing because you've got a trip coming up in May, which is the main reason why I wanted you to come in, come on is so that we can support what you're doing. And I try not to, you know, pull punches. When I say support, <laughs> I mean, we want to support you financially with what you're doing. Can you explain to people yeah. why that's so important? And I appreciate that. So I just want to throw out the, the dates as well. So actually I leave the end of March to go to Everest okay. and I will be there throughout May, but it's going to be there for a while. So okay. uh, the different climbs that you saw like this past year, like if you go on the social media and you kind of see the different things there, that's all building a skill set to lead up to prepare me for Everest. Okay. Um, and you know, again, the ultimate goal when I had the vision for what I wanted to do, it's like, cool, I want to climb Mount Everest. Like, that's something that's been on my list 
my entire life pretty right. much. So that was gonna happen. But when I found out that it was a unique you know, opportunity, the fact that I would be the first American born black man to do so, yes. I'm like, again, how can I use that opportunity to leverage that to benefit others? And so that's what it's really about. And so raising money uh, for the different charities that I partner with in Atlanta, and again, that list is Children's Healthcare of Atlanta, the Atlanta Dream Center, and Four Corners Group. Right. And those are three amazing charities that I think are having a really positive impact in the city of Atlanta. Right. And so when I went into it, it's like, man, okay, I do have to raise money to do these climbs. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality of it. It's like any other charity event, like there's just certain costs that are associated with it. But, you know, my goal is to go above and beyond that. Um, there's well, where can people go to support you, mm -hmm. meaning give financially towards your cause? And how much are you trying to raise also? Yep. So, you know, I'm a dreamer and I've always have been. And so, you know, I don't well, want to yeah, yeah. I, I don't want to uh, limit it. I mean, right. I have a, a friend of mine, a colleague rather that climbed Mount Everest in 2018 and he raised yeah. over three hundred thousand dollars for his. OK. And so, you know, that's what I'm targeting right now. If you go to my GoFundMe page, you can simply go to GoFundMe.com. Uh, slash summit 413 or you can go direct to the website which is summit 413.com and you can click on one of the multiple donation tabs yeah. and that'll take you directly to that gofundme page or if you want to contact me directly as well um, you can just shoot me an email or whatever we can make it work the biggest thing is that people are willing and able to, to do so. And that's the big thing. And you guys, is. this is Atlanta. Atlanta is a place where we support one another, especially mm -hmm. people. It doesn't matter if you're black, white, Latino, or whatever, but especially in the black community here in Atlanta, we've got to support this gentleman. He's doing great things. Mm -hmm. He's making a difference. He's cli He's literally climbing <laughs> mountains, which is yeah. kind of the symbolism of, you know, whatever mountain you have in life, you can climb and you can exactly. and, and overcome. Exactly. And that's one of the main things with your message is that, you know, no matter what obstacle you have, you can overcome it. Mm -hmm. What have been some of the obstacles that you have? <laughs> okay, I hit a Talk nerve there. About that. Boy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so uh, I never get hurt, and that's been one of the blessings is that God has just put a head of protection over me because I do some knuckleheaded stuff, and I just admit that. Right. Um, I used to race motorcycle semi-professionally. Uh, thankfully, I never had any serious injuries in spite of crashing at over 100 miles an hour. Like, oh my goodness. That's how blessed so I am. So you've never so. broke a bone? I have, but not racing. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, and so when you would, you know, do those things, you're like, man, something's gonna happen. But it never did, and just right. very thankful for that. A lot of my, I think my parents and family praying for my time has a lot to do with that. But nonetheless, so this past year, um, I actually fractured my fibula. Oh. Cracked it all the way through. It was a hairline fracture, but nonetheless, it's broken all the way through. Yeah. Right before having to leave for a climb, and that was. So how do you, did you climb still? Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, it was honestly one of the pain pills. I would assume. No. no, you don't. So I, I'm not a huge fan of painkillers uh, because you need the, at sense. least you know you need that feedback from your body to kind of know where you are. Absolutely. And so that way, you know, I, I want to risk joking. my leg yeah. falling off. Right, right. Like, I want to kind of know and be able to say, okay, I need to take a step back, or yeah. you know, you don't want to push through something when your body's trying to t give you some sort of warmth. Absolutely. And so that was one of the things. And then uh, this is the reason I have to go back to, uh, to Aconcagua in Argentina, um, down there. Again, I have a friend that lives there and he hasn't, he manages an orphanage down there. So I'm down there a few days before the climb, spending time with him and the kids, playing soccer, and tore some niggas in my knee. Oh my goodness. And I'm like, this is two injuries in one year. Right. And I haven't had a major injury in a long time. Right. And so, uh, you know, honestly, they're connected and talking to my doctor about it. It's like, it made sense because, you know, because I did push myself with, with my right leg being broken, or excuse me, my left leg being broken, um, I put a lot more, a more stress pressure on your right I leg. I actually did hurt my knee and that mm -hmm. joint uh, 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. So it kind of like re agitated that injury so, so will you be ready I mean physically I mean obviously I can tell you're mentally tough mm -hmm. and you're mentally ready for this climb in May or at the end of April mm -hmm. do you think your body will be physically yeah, ready 100 percent, and that's one of the, okay. the blessings because uh, it was a scare at first right because when it right. happened I heard something so I looked at my leg and like my leg is not supposed to be bending that way and oh it my was goodness. a whole thing yeah we went to the to the hospital was it like on the movies where you could see this out of place yeah but it, it was just like a, a single motion right I wasn't yeah. laying at my leg on the wrong way like when I made that step and look my leg was bent and mm -hmm. you know in a way it shouldn't go and I was like that's not good now one of but, the things you mentioned to me go back to go back to the fundraising because once again mm -hmm. I just want people to support you and 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 check out what you're doing mm -hmm. uh, prior to taping you said that the reason why it's so important for you 
to get support for Mount Everest is because it's more expensive mm -hmm. than any other climb. Can you speak mm -hmm. to that? Yeah, it's just, you know, the bottom line is just an expensive endeavor. Um, and a lot of that goes into the safety factor, the probability of success. You're not just independently wealthy? Or? I wish. No, I'm just <laughs> Go ahead, finish what you Not yet. Saying. We'll say not you yet. You will be, yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so there's different things that go into a successful attempt at Mount Everest. Yeah. Now, there are some companies you can go uh, with that are kind of, you consider like a shoestring budget. And, you know, just the reality of those is you're putting yourself in a lot more at risk and also the chance of success is a lot less okay. and so you're going with i'm going with a well-established company i've been working with them on the, the previous climbs um, you know i climbed mont blanc with them in france recently and also going back to argentina with them as well and so having that good relationship knowing that i can trust this organization their ability to get me to the top mm -hmm. that's a big thing and so i didn't want to again raise all this awareness raise all this hype around it and then make a poor decision who i decided to go with and not absolutely make it to the so you decide to go with the best yeah. And that well, takes one. That takes yeah, funds. Yeah, they definitely are one of the best. Not the most expensive, because there's companies that can easily charge you a quarter million dollars to do it. Uh, oh my goodness. So yeah, it's 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 insane. Okay. Uh, but, Once yeah. again, how can people get in contact with you? Yeah. So again, to get in contact with me, just go to my website, uh, summit413.com, and you can click on the contact tab at the bottom of the page. You can email directly at Emmett, excuse me, info at summit413.com, or follow me on social media, uh, which would be you know, at summit413.com, and that's on Instagram and also Facebook. But there's many different ways. Again, I think the, simple, the easiest way is to go to the website, which again is www.summit413, that's with two M's, uh, .com. So. And that's also where they can get in contact with you to support the GoFundMe page. Exactly. And we Go gotta Fund support page, the GoFundMe yeah. page, y'all. I'm telling you, what this man is doing is changing people's lives. Just yeah. the mere fact that you're here. Yeah, but I want to speak to that point. So when I had the vision for this project, I didn't want to single out people that are that are wealthy, right? Right. From my personal belief and what I've seen. I want you to hold that thought okay. because I want you to really get into the meat of that because I know where you're going with that. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back with Jermaine Middleton and Summit 413. Spreading the seeds of life right here on the Donnie Jones Live Show. Sponsored by Don's Tree Service. If you got a comment about the show or want to be a guest on the show, just send us an email at DonnieJonesLive at gmail.com. Now, back to more Donnie Jones Live. Hey, welcome back. I'm Donnie Jones. You're looking at Donnie Jones Live, and we are here with Jermaine Middleton with Summit 413. This is a man on a mission, making a difference, climbing mountains. And right before we went to break, I kind of cut you off. You want to finish what you were saying because it was. I, I, I want to get into the meat and potatoes mm -hmm. of um, what you were talking about. Yep. Yeah. So I think that we, you know, and you can break this up into different ways. Just society, humans in general, we put a lot of burden on certain individuals to make a change, to yeah. make a difference. We look at people and say, oh, they have so much money, they can do X, Y, and Z. Yeah. Uh, but I want to challenge that, and I think a lot of major change comes from every individual, every person doing their part to make the world a better place. Absolutely. Um, right? You know, there's only one Barack Obama right now, right? right. You know, he can't be everywhere can't at every point in time. Not, <laughs> you know I mean? not to, but you know, or any you know person that you want right. to look at success, right? So, right. but if we each individually take on a certain challenge, and then that's why I'm motivated. You know, you asked earlier, like, why do I do these different things? And that's why I go out into the mission field on a regular basis. That's right. why I spend my time volunteering with the youth and that sort of thing because I know that as an individual, yes, I can make an, a change in this particular person's life. Right. And so, bringing that back to what that means for supporting Summit 413, I didn't have the vision of having a few people donate a lot of money. Right. Um, I had a bigger vision of a lot of people mm -hmm. donating small amounts of money. So right. I don't care if it's five, ten dollars, twenty dollars, whatever the case is. But if that's you, actually what got Barack Obama elected. Mm -hmm. The funding was from people doing little things. Mm -hmm. And that's what you guys can do for this gentleman is just go to GoFundMe page, support mm -hmm. what he's doing. Tell him the GoFundMe page one more time. Yeah, so, so the we'll GoFundMe drive that page home. is GoFundMe.com slash summit four thirteen. That's S U M M I T four one three. And again, if you go to the website, which is summit four thirteen dot com, you can simply click on the donate tab and that'll take you directly to the GoFundMe page as well. Mm -hmm. Well the other thing that's inspiring about you is you mentioned that you looking like you. And I mm -hmm. can relate to that because even though I don't climb mountains I'm in a, a non-traditional field, you know, outside of what I do here, which is in the tree care industry. Mm -hmm. And then when I was a kid, I wanted to play rock guitar and all that kind of stuff. And people say, well, black girls don't do this and mm -hmm. women don't do that. And I'm sure that you found that you being an African-American man, people go, well, people don't be climbing mountains. Have you ran into that? All the time. 
<laughs> it's funny if you go on the website right now or even go to my instagram page you'll see a funny clip so when i reached the summit of uh mont blanc last year which is the highest peak in western which means uh, mount white literally but yeah, go ahead yeah, it really does. yeah he said that so there was a french mountain guy he's like i've been a mountain guy for 20 years and i've never seen a black man on top of this mountain he was wow. ecstatic like he gave me yeah. i don't want to spoil it. he gave me a kiss on the cheek he's white it's a yeah i saw video. that i was like yeah <laughs> I was like, okay, yeah, there's a cheek. Yeah, that's, nothing. I, I was mean, scared you know. for a second. I was like, wait a minute. But, <laughs> well, you know, we shouldn't be scared. There's nothing to be scared of a kiss, yeah, but go ahead. But yeah, it was just a funny, you know, interaction. But seeing how excited he was about seeing me there, to me, yeah. like, that's what it was all about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like knocking down barriers, breaking down walls. I was like, hey, we can all do this. And that was a very diverse experience as well. It's so, mm-hmm. like when you're on mountains, you're there with people from all over the world. Yeah. I mean, when I was on, again, on Mont Blanc, there's people from, you know, Germany, Switzerland, France, yeah. people from uh, Japan, China, like all over the world, but there wasn't anybody that looked like me. You well, know? So what would was, you say to people that want to maybe do what you're doing or do something else in their life, but they're not getting the support that you got? Because mm-hmm. so, obviously you said you come from a great family, you've got a great church community that you come from, but I'm sure, especially with you volunteering, you know, not everybody has that kind of support. Mm-hmm. What would you say to those people that haven't quite quite have the support you have mm-hmm. in order for yeah, them to so do I think things. you have to find that within yourself yeah. and be you know a person that's driven in spite of what people say because yeah. um, it isn't easy like my mom's not excited about me climbing Mount Everest she's just not that's just she's not is. excited no. about you no I'm her baby like okay, well, okay she <laughs> supports it she's very supportive of it, but she's not yeah. jumping down like yeah my son's gonna right, climb right. this dangerous mountain mm-hmm. that's not the case they're saying when gotcha. I race motorcycles they were very supportive you know and they my dad hates most I don't know why. I was like, you see how good I do it, dad? But he's still not a big fan of it. So they were supportive in it, but there's still multiple conversations mm-hmm. that had to be had about this is what I'm passionate about and this is why I want to do it. So sometimes right. you do have to kind of go against the grain. Uh, you know, you want to be respectful of the people that care about you because right. it's typically coming from a place that has a positive root, right? right. They care for Absolutely. the health of all being, so therefore they don't want to be hurt or injured. But at the same time, you have to understand what you're passionate about. And my passion may be different or your passion may be different from somebody else's, but that doesn't make it wrong. And that means you can still pursue it in spite of it being different from everybody else's or what, or even if nobody else wants to do it or it looks like you that does it, that doesn't mean that it's not okay for you to do it. Mm -hmm. And so I'll just say, find that that motivation within yourself, figure out the reason why you want to do these different things. And if it's important enough to you, you'll find a way to make it happen, regardless if everybody supports you or nobody supports you. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's so funny listening to you. I'm like, he sounds like a motivational speaker or a pastor. Yeah. Is that in your future? Because I'm like, it, this can't just be about climbing. There's something else on the other side of this. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of different things that I want to do. I mean, yeah. you know, one of the p- positive things in my life is that I have been able to speak all over the world. So being able to speak, you know, at churches in Haiti or in, or in India, I mean, it's very yeah. uh, a fulfilling experience to not only just share what I'm doing or what God's done in my life, but also to hear from them and what God's mm-hmm. done in their lives. And so, yeah, I definitely want to continue to motivate people, encourage them, no matter what I do in life. Um, and But yeah, I do hope that something comes out of this where I have more opportunities to, to speak more. I got a feeling there's going to be a lot that comes out of what you're doing. <laughs> yeah, but one step at a time. Yes, so, you know, one, one gotta, step at a gotta, time. You got to raise the funds, got to get to the top of the mountain, and then we got to come right. back down safely. So it's That's awesome. right. Now, how many mountains have you climbed all together? Uh, that is... A tough oh, question wow. to answer. No, so it's not that many, but I mean, when you talk about technical climbs, so I mean, when we, I would say technically maybe like three at this point. So I've climbed uh, Mount Whitney, which is the highest point in the lower 48. Um, that's in ca- California. Mm-hmm. Um, I've climbed Mount Blanc, which is the highest peak in uh, Western Europe. That's yeah. like 15,000, almost 16,000 feet. Um, I've climbed some peaks out in Washington State. Um, so Just Mount all Baker. Over. Yeah, wow. and then also, you know, Kilimanjaro in Africa, which was a great, that was a great experience. Like, I definitely recommend, like, that's I just want to climb Kilimanjaro because it on sounds your, good. You know? <laughs> it's tough. Don't get me wrong. It's yeah. tough, but it's it's not insanely challenging. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, you'll push yourself very, very so hard. So somebody like me could do it? Everybody can do it. Okay. Like, I, that's I mean, right. And I mean that I, that's pretty right. much I, literally. Like, that's okay. the amazing thing about the human spirit and just humans in general. Yeah. It's like, people are like, Jermaine, you're crazy. Like, I wish I could do something. Like, no. Nothing that I do is impossible for anybody else right. to do. Like there is literally a man that climbed Mount Everest with no legs. Wow. There is literally a man that's climbed Kilimanjaro on his hands and like no lower torso. Okay. Like people are actually doing these things. So like okay. if you think that what I'm doing is special or whatever, thank you. But there's some people that are really, really doing amazing things. Well, you are doing amazing things. And I want to thank you one more time for coming on our show and and letting us see what can be done when you put Mm -hmm. your mind to it. Once again, tell the people how to get in contact with you. Yeah. So once again, just go to the website, which is www.summit.com 
413. That's two, uh, two M's, so S-U-M-M-I-T, 413.com. And you can click on the link to donate, and that'll take you directly to my GoFundMe page, which is also GoFundMe.com slash Summit413. You can also follow me on Instagram at Summit413 and also on Facebook at uh, Summit 413 as well. So. Well, Jermaine, I want to thank you once again for coming oh, on our for show. Time. We really appreciate you coming on our show and we wish you much success in everything that you do in your life. And we wish you much success in everything you do in your life. And if anything you can get from Jermaine's story today is whatever mountain you have in your life, you can get to the top. Be blessed. Spreading the seeds of life right here on the Donnie Jones Live Show. Sponsored by Don Street Service. If you got a comment about the show or want to be a guest on the show, just send us an email at DonnieJonesLive at gmail.com.